And so initially I felt pretty duped, you know, that I was kind of lied to with the model, but then I realized I should have done a little bit more digging and it was ultimately my fault. What's up everybody? Welcome back to another gear review here at Gideon's Tactical, I'm Aaron. And we're gonna dive right in with a flashlight brand I have never heard of before. This is the Elzetta series of flashlights and we are looking today at the G-EDC-AA. So this is a AA designed EDC flashlight. Now I had never heard of this brand before. The reason I stumbled across it is because I was looking for a company that potentially made like this size compact EDC flashlights that make their flashlights in America. So many flashlights, like 90% of them on the market are made overseas uh, in China usually and you know, to some extent, that's just the world that we live in. I mean, my beloved Streamlight ProTac, you know, L1-1A that we're going to be running in this competitive option here, uh, that made in China as well. You know, so I, I get that, but I was hoping to just find something that was made in America. I stumbled across this brand and I saw a lot of reviews and comments and like made in America, da, da, da. So I was like, sweet, let's pick this up. Uh, it has some limiting factors to it, but because it's made in America, I'm willing to overlook that and pay the $40 price point that I paid to pick this up on Amazon, which is about the going rate within a few dollars of the ProTac currently. Well, when it arrived, I saw right here on the packaging, Lexington, Kentucky, that's where the company is based. So it's an American based company that is awesome, but I saw made in the PRC, People's Republic of China. And I was like, what in the world? What's going on here? I don't know for 40 bucks what I'm getting with this. What what's the deal here? And I did some more research and apparently the G series that they have is made in China. Their Z series is made in America. Those flashlights are similar in body style to a lot of Surefires and you know definitely more on the tactical side of things, a little bit larger and those are like around 200 to 250. So maybe at some point I'll review one of those. I have this I figured I'd unpack it for you. I've carried it a few times, tested it for us, and we're gonna run it up against the Streamlight because these are about the same price, but since they both come from the same country of origin, uh, I'm just not seeing the capability in this. There's some cool ideas with this GEDC AA, but it really lags compared to the competition when we're looking at you know, where it's manufactured basically and the materials there for, you know, price to build and all that other stuff. So let's unpack this here. Now, um, what it has again is a double A, some mounting options that are kind of interesting. Now it has this nice pocket clip, decent, no issues there, decent retention. You know, there's a little bit of movement, but I never like lost it in my pocket. It is reversible. You know, you can unpop it and then clip it to the upper housing here so that you could clip it to the bill of a hat. So that's a good little feature. I always look for that in these like little EDC lights. That's just, you know, I wear a hat 90% of the time and that helps. Let me know what your favorite hat is. If you own one, if you only have one hat the rest of your life, what would it be? Let me know. I think it would be my, my, well, they're discontinued now, but my outdoor research trucker hats I wear a lot. Those are dope. Anyway, um, okay, so pocket clip. Two opposing lanyard holes that have good real estate and it comes with a little lanyard that you could do if you wanted to do that. This is cool. Not only does it have the tail stand capability, very easy to do, but it has the thread on the back here that matches like gorilla pods and camera you know, threads for like your camera. So that means that you could mount this and do a hands-free almost like work light on a gorilla pod or something like that. I, I don't think I've ever seen that on another flashlight, particularly in the size range. That is a cool feature, innovative, and I did really like that. That would give you the ability to just carry around a little gorilla pod or tripod and screw this on and aim it where you need to and work hands-free, great. Uh, this is made out of mil-spec type three hardened, hardened aluminum, cool little kind of, it, it's not, flat, I don't know, it's like a titanium, smoke titanium, I guess. I don't know. Um, it's going to weigh in at two and a half ounces with the battery that we'll get to momentarily. And it has this nice texturing along the top there. Good body grip. You know, it doesn't feel super slick anywhere. And then a recessed uh, lens. So this is a twist head. That's the first kind of downer to me for that price point, a twist head style flashlight. The Streamlight has a really nice, you know, actuating button tap. You're gonna have to twist the head on that. That feels like a very inexpensive at this day and age type of flashlight. So you have that good ribbing. You can do it one handed, you know, and here we go. Engage low, release medium, release high, and then off again. And then it cycles low, medium, 
high. It does have a memory mode, so if you turn it off for a while and then you actuate again, it will remember the last mode that it was on. So that's nice, you know, so you don't have to like cycle through again if you like a particular type of mode. Then as we open this up, you get a spare gasket as well. So that's good, nice little red gasket there. It comes, and this is the first kind of just oddity, positive and negative here. It comes with a 1000 milliamp AA battery sized battery with a micro USB plug and it comes with a micro USB plug. Cool, now I don't have to go through, you know, AA's all the time. This is a two point, or excuse me, this is a 1.2 volt battery. Your normal AA's that you just pull off the shelf, alkaline or lithium are gonna be 1.5. Uh, volts. So this is actually weaker than your off the shelf battery that will come into longevity of use here momentarily. Uh, and they put it like in three different warning areas to not with this particular light use a 14500 double a size rechargeable battery. I'm sure some of us have these floating around. It would have been awesome if it could run on that. It probably would have even boosted the light power and runtime. The, like in three areas, they're like, do not use that type of AA battery. It will overheat and damage, you know, the, the sensor and all that. So you're stuck using their proprietary, basically 1000 milliamp or just your standard. So don't lose this thing. <laughs> and you're gonna probably have to go to them to get another one because I've never seen a 1000 milliamp. Maybe they exist, I don't know. So the issue then comes in after that with uh and, and to remember here we have with this it runs on a cr123 you can get rechargeable cr123 batteries for the protac it is larger and about almost an ounce heavier but not by much it's the same price point and as we're about to see much more powerful with the double a because this is by fuel this is obviously like sort of but you can run a double a in here all of the specs i'm going to read off of the this um streamline will be based off of the double a in here and it currently has the double a in there now Here's the dealio. When we look at the performance, what we have here, and actually I'm gonna to go to this one, it's a little bit easier. There we go. Hopefully we're gonna be able to read this. Uh, on high, with the rechargeable battery it comes with, you have 150 lumens for 38 minutes, then medium is 30 lumens for 5.8 hours, and then low is 1.5 lumens at 60 hours. If you put in a normal, just alkaline or lithium battery, you then get all of a sudden the same lumens stay, the lumens stay the same throughout, but you now almost double your battery runtime. You now get 66 minutes, nine hours, or a hundred hours, depending on the mode that you're on. So this is not gonna give you anywhere near the amount of battery life that just a run of the mill battery. So it's kind of like, yeah, you get to recharge it, but you're gonna get double the battery life out of just a normal battery. So it's almost be like run this as backup and then run, use normal batteries in this, normal double A's. So that's weird and oddity. And those are very low power outputs. And the light itself has a lower sensor quality than what you're gonna get on the double A powered portion of the stream light. As an example here for spec, and I'll run in a screenshot here just so we can see this a little bit better. But the, it, these both with double A's will have the same lumen count, 150. Now the Elzetta is gonna have 85 meters of distance. This has 105 meters of distance. The runtime with an alkaline battery on the Streamlight is an hour and 20 minutes. If you put a lithium AA battery in here, it is four hours and 25 minutes. So that is significantly more powerful with just a normal AA. So, you know, you're not basically gonna get close to the amount of power, or excuse me, uh, runtime with this Elzetta for right around the same price. And then add to that, this is a big one, you know, the intensity. The Elzetta has 1810 CDs, the, um, or candles, and the Streamlight has 2,750, almost a thousand more intensity power than on the Elzetta, and that is off of the AA. We're not even talking about the CR123. The CR123 bumps it up to 350 lumens, takes it up to 6,400 candelas, and the run times are about the same, and the distance is going to go out to like 160 meters. So that's what the capability of something like a Streamlight is going to give you on a AA. And there's just not the, the power output. Now I use these at close range. They're pretty comparable. You can always tell that the Streamlight is more intense, but out to, you know, 
you know, which is what you're going to use for these usually, like 25 yards in my in my backyard, across the yard, you know, around the the fire pit, that type of stuff. You're not going to notice much difference in throw, in you know the the warmth that it has. All that are going to be pretty similar, but it's when you start looking at the intensity and the distance throws that the Streamlight is going to very much outperform. And then on top of that, the battery run times, particularly if you use a lithium, where you don't really see that jump. Even when you put a lithium in here, you're not going to get much more runtime on this um, LZ. So, though the LZ is interesting, and if it was, you know, priced more around 25 bucks, it might be a viable option. When we're going to that price range, it, it just doesn't make sense to me, and I, I was kind of disappointed. If it was made in America, I would have cut it so much grace, you know, because it's just like an American-made tool. But because it's not, there's so much on the market around 40 dollars. It's gonna, just going to give you so much more power. So much more capability, run times, you know, in comparison to this little guy right here. So if it was 10 years ago, it might be a little bit more competitive, but I would say that the LZ G EDC AA is not competitive in today's market. And it would be better just to go with the Streamlight ProTac or some other like Phoenix or Olight or something like that for the performance. Now I look forward to discovering what maybe their Z series has to offer at some point and run that up maybe against a Surefire in some future date. But I look forward to hearing from you guys. What's your thought on uh, the LZ, particularly if you own some of their other lights? I'd love to know your comments on that. How's your Streamline ProTac if you own one running for you? I've had this series for like, I don't know, eight years now and I love this thing, it's so good. So um, that's me, guys. That's my mileage. Appreciate you coming over today. I invite you to subscribe if you haven't yet and check out the other video popping up. And until next time, always remember, stay equipped, stay prepared, and I'll see you out there.